Hello developers, today's CSS trick isn't just clever, it's powerful. What if you could change your entire UI theme, colors, gaps, layout, based on the size of the container, pull live values from HTML attributes, and even mix media query variables into scoped styles, all with just HTML and CSS? In this video, I'll show you how to build a multi-theme layout using container queries, the new ATTR function, and media queries. It's clean, it's scalable, and it works without a single line of JavaScript. Let's dive in. In most projects, if you wanna change themes like light mode, dark mode, or retro styles, you usually need to add a class or an attribute in the HTML. But what if you're working inside a CMS or a framework where you can't modify the markup? What if you need to apply themes purely through styling? That's where this new feature comes in. In this demo, we're combining two modern CSS features, container queries, which allow a component to respond based on its parent size, instead of the full screen like traditional media queries. Style-based container queries, which means we can apply different CSS rules depending on the custom property values, like a theme, defined on the parent. So instead of checking screen width, we can now say, if the value of theme is light, apply this set of styles, or if the theme is dark, use a different color palette. And all of this happens inside scoped containers, so each card can behave independently. Our layout includes three product cards. Each card sits inside a wrapper, and each wrapper defines a variable called theme. This theme is not set with a class or an attribute. It's defined using a CSS variable. The first card sets the theme to light, the second sets it to dark. The third card is retro. Along with the theme, we also define a few more variables, the background color, the text color, the accent color for buttons and price, the product image. All of these values are scoped, which means they only apply to that card. We then write container queries using the style keyword. So we write, if the container has theme set to light, apply light theme styles, if the theme is dark, use dark styles, and so on. Inside each block, we apply the matching background, text color, button color, and so on, all using the variables we defined earlier. This is what makes it clean and scalable. We don't hard code anything. We only change the value of the theme, and the container query handles the rest. This setup is perfect for component libraries, CMS-driven pages, or reusable UI kits where you want each component to be theme-aware but you can't rely on classes or JavaScript toggles. Each section, each container owns its style logic. Here's what we did. We applied different themes like light, dark, and retro by defining a CSS variable called theme inside each container wrapper. Based on the value of this theme variable, we use container style queries to apply custom styles like background color, text color, button color, and even font. So if the theme was light, the card had a white background and blue accents. If it was dark, it used a deep navy tone and light text. And if it was retro, it went full vintage with yellow paper-like background and orange highlights. All of this logic was scoped, meaning each card handled its own style logic based on what the container told it. Let's take our container queries to the next level. In this part, we're going to make our product cards automatically switch themes based on a dynamic value. We'll do that using the new ATTR function inside CSS. We're still using the same layout, a row of themed product cards. But this time, instead of setting the theme individually on each card, we're controlling the entire page's theme from one place, the body tag. We added a single attribute called data theme on the body. And that's it. Here's the trick. We use a new CSS feature that allows us to pull attribute values directly into a CSS variable. In our example, we create a variable called theme. Then we assign its value using the ATTR function, which literally means read the value of the data theme attribute from the body and treat it like a string we can use in styles. That means if the theme is set to dark, this variable becomes dark. If we change it to light, it becomes light. And since our card components are wrapped in containers, we can now write container style queries that say, if the theme is dark, use the dark styles. If it's light, use the light styles. We moved all the theme logic inside container queries. 
So now instead of each card having its own theme variable, every product card simply reads the current theme from the container it's in. That's why we moved all color variables, like background color, text color, accent color, into the container queries themselves. Each theme block, light, dark, retro, defines the full visual system using scoped variables. So now we don't set colors manually anymore. We let the theme variable control everything automatically. Now here's where it gets powerful. If we change the value of the data theme attribute on the body tag, let's say from dark to retro, every card automatically switches to that theme. That's because the container queries are watching the theme variable and the theme variable is connected to the data theme attribute using the ATR function. It's clean, it's reactive. Where can this be useful? Imagine building a design system where the parent layout, like a sidebar or a section, decides the theme for its children. This technique lets you inherit design logic just by changing one attribute. It's perfect for CMS-based sites, server-rendered HTML, Node.js environments, or apps where you want to toggle themes instantly without reloading components. Let's summarize what we just did. We use the ATTR function to read a theme value from the body element. We connected that value to a CSS variable. We wrapped all theme-specific styles inside container queries. We defined all visual tokens, like background text button, using CSS variables. And we made the cards completely reactive to the current theme all controlled from a single attribute. This is one of the cleanest and most flexible ways to build reusable, theme-aware components. Now, what if I told you? You could use media queries to set theme variables, and then use container queries to style your components based on those variables. Yep. We're about to connect global responsiveness with local styling logic, all with CSS only. We write three media queries. The first one says, if the screen is wider than 500 pixels, set the theme variable to light. The second says, if it's wider than 700 pixels, switch the theme to dark. And the third says, if the screen crosses 900 pixels, make the theme retro. These are just three breakpoints. You can choose your own depending on your layout. Now we're not applying styles inside the media queries. We're simply setting a variable called theme and letting the rest of the styling be handled somewhere else. We set this theme variable at the root level, so it's available globally. Then inside our card components, or any other UI block, we use container-style queries that listen for the value of that theme variable. So the component asks, hey, is the theme light? Okay, I'll use white backgrounds and blue accents. Is it dark? Let's switch to charcoal backgrounds and cyan highlights. Retro? I'll go yellow and orange with a typewriter font. That's the real power of separating logic from design. So what did we do? We used media queries to define the theme based on screen size. We set that variable at the root level, and we used container queries to apply styling logic inside each card based on the current theme value. This is modern modular CSS, and it's only getting better. Now, before you rush to use this in your next client project, Let's talk honestly about browser support. The ATTR function you just saw, the one we used to pull theme from the body's data attribute, is part of the new CSS level four specification. And right now it's only fully supported in the latest versions of Chrome and Edge. Both these browsers allow you to use ATTR inside properties like background color, font, or content, and even inside selectors or queries like container style. That's what makes this demo work so seamlessly. But if you open the same page in Firefox or Safari, there's a high chance you won't see the theming work as expected. Why? Because older browsers still treat ATTR as a read-only function for content only. They don't yet allow it to be used in style logic, like assigning it to a variable or checking its value inside a container query. This means the layout will still load, the cards will be visible, but the theming logic won't respond to changes in the attribute. So if you're planning to use this technique in a real product, make sure you either use progressive enhancement where modern browsers get the dynamic theming and older ones just fall back to a default look or wait until cross-browser support improves, especially in Safari and Firefox. So always check compatibility before using this in production.
If you want to see more real world projects using modern CSS like this, press the like button and subscribe for more front end techniques. And tell me in the comments, which feature do you want to explore next? Container size animations, dynamic grid layouts, or something even crazier? See you in the next video.